We are good to go. Avast me hearties and welcome once again to full stream ahead. Arg. I be your captain, Charlie, the Professor Esser. And with me as always is me skinny rich friend. It's Maz. Welcome back, Maz. In a world of capes and lunatics, gods and monsters, there are those who still fight against the Galactic Empire. One such man is Obi-Wan, and this is his story. Despite Obi-Wan. his best efforts, sorry. Despite his best efforts, yes. Obi-Wan Kenobi, season one, part four. Obi-Wan Kenobi plots a daring mission into enemy territory. Our director this week is Deborah Chow. Uh, our writers are, of course, Joby Harold and Hannah Freeman, uh, based on the characters by, based on Star Wars by George Lucas. And I just want to see who else gets credits on this. Uh, that's it. Just two written bys. Um, okay. But yeah, so, but that, that, that's the story. Uh, Maz, this story, it opens up in the back, back to tank. Yep. Uh, two, two, two great warriors dipped in back to joined right. by, uh, by that link. And what did he have like second de- yeah. degree burns on one arm? <laughs> oh yeah. Eh, well, you know. Well, definitely, uh, Anakin. I guess it was more of the emotional damage that was caused there. Well, yeah, and of course, you you absolutely see, you absolutely see, um, uh, Kenobi freak out once he realizes that whether in the shared back to tank or whether well he's in the back to tank that allows Vader to reach out to him, and he sees Vader again, and he feels Vader again. So you think it wasn't and, just like a shot saying like, oh, he's in there at the same time. You think he felt Vader feeling him in that moment. I do think that there is that feeling oh. of his presence, you know. Interesting. In fact, I think that it's also just, in fact, I, I've heard I've heard the statement that that's why he had to get out. Because he realized if he stayed in there, Vader's going to see where he is. I just thought he was having a bad dream like, you know. A man in that situation is is prone to have happened to him, you know. I mean, it's possible that that's it. Yeah. It's possible that it was just a horrible, horrible dream, as they say. But um, I don't know, man. It, it seems to me because you remember, like um, the last time that we when I'm forgetting what happened, but when we when we see um, Anakin's eyes open in the last episode and uh you get the impression that he senses kenobi that he knows that kenobi's active again so because that's the thing the force it's it's a river and every time you touch it it sends ripples out and if you are an incredibly powerful and sensitive force user like anakin skywalker you notice that you know that is why as they say that is why Obi-Wan is, has tried not to use the Force. That's probably why he didn't know that Vader was still alive, because he couldn't feel him. Now, now did Vader obviously knew Obi-Wan was alive. Yes, yes, because he is on the most wanted list of Jedi we want to ca- capture. No, well, well, I, I think what I meant to say was uh, that he knew where he was, that he could feel him with the Force once he started using it. Yeah, once he once he used the force, then yes, then Vader could sense him. Vader knew right where he was, and Vader could, um, well, maybe not find him per se, but certainly track him down, or at least get a sense of where he's at. Hmm. And you know that is what, and again, that's what I think scares scares Obi Wan here because, of course, Obi Wan he is. This was very traumatic for Obi-Wan. You know, in the last episode, he gets dragged through the fire by Anakin, um, by Darth Vader. And, you know, I think that this was his worst nightmare. And, you know, I think on some level, 
I will wager that he feels he deserves it. You know, and I think that's the real hard part for him is he knows that, you know, yes, Anakin betrayed the Jedi, but at the same time, maybe had he been a better teacher, you know, Anakin yeah. might not have turned to the dark side. And, you know, that's that's always the thing, you know, like Owen, uh, Uncle Owen says, like, like you trained his father, you know. Oh, Justin says hola. Um, yes, um, but you know that. But that's the thing. It's it is, it is this reality that I wonder you know, if he's ever considered that that is the natural course of the universe that it was supposed to happen, and all he did was facilitate whatever his role was. You know, he might not see the bigger picture and see what role it may have served, but you know, perhaps the world needed a Darth Vader to come show us who we truly are, so we can learn to be better, kind of thing. Well, you know, I've always, and this was this is one of my many takes, is that, you know, when you say Anakin is going to bring balance to the Force, when he is the chosen one to bring balance to the Force, the biggest presumption that the Jedi make in that is that that means that they win, that they are balanced, uh, the balanced Force. But in truth, they're not balanced. They're mm. not any more balanced than anyone else because their whole purpose is to manipulate the force for their own purposes their own ends and a balanced force would not be always pushed and pulled and prodded for any end it is simply about being in tune with the force and letting the force flow through you and letting that be a means of communication throughout the universe it's almost like being in service to the force rather than bending the force to your will Exactly. And that is what the point is, is that you can bend the force to your will just fine, but that is not mm. balance. It's and if not you want service of the flow. Exactly. And this is why I say, you know, this is why arguably Anakin does bring balance to the force. Because after he kills the Jedi, 20 years later, he kills the last Sith. Or at least tries to, you know, <laughs> and that's the idea is that, you know, once you can get rid of these Jedi and Sith, then maybe the Force can be in balance. And maybe we can find our own path. Then. At least that's one theory. I don't know. I um, like it. Yeah, I like it too, because I made it up. Um, <laughs> uh, but you have this... and I, I also think the back to tank is interesting because rehearsing those memories again in his mind probably mm -hmm. triggered his familiarity with the force again which he needed mm -hmm. oh yeah and that is and that is part of his journey on this is he is coming through this from the very start where he is not using the force at all and then like at most he's just being very timid in fact we even see him like try to move something with the force and it's like he he really can't anymore it's like he doesn't have the control of it and he's probably afraid to really you know try mm -hmm. to use the force because again that's going to trip that's going to that's going to make him a target um but and because i do believe that he does see in this in that vision which is why i do think that there is that connection i think he sees the fortress in there doesn't he um I don't know. I'm trying to remember how they knew that Leia was at the fortress. Anyway, but um, they do realize that Leia is at the fortress, that Leia was taken. Um, and it's a very interesting thing. And I think that there's this um, aspect of the story that's playing a little fast and loose with what the protocols are. Because oh, we do oh, see oh. One okay. Because, you know, you do see Leah still saying, I am a princess of Alderaan. Oh, you know, okay. my father is a senator, you know. I, and, you know, this whole, which I don't understand how the daughter of a senator is a princess. But you know what? The queen, mm -hmm. Queen Amidala, it was an elected position too. So we right. don't really know how the royals work in the Star Wars universe or the Star Wars galaxy, as it were. 
I thought uh-huh. she was like just like a little kid who was told she's a princess, you know, like she lived yeah. in the governor's mansion. And so like, you know, as a kid, oh, you're a little princess. This is our little castle. And she's just, you know, she's five or, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, because I mean, I, I think as that smart she as has... she is, she's also five. Yes. But I do think she actually does have a royal title in there somewhere Probably. for some reason. Like I said, like Queen Amidala, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And technically, she is the daughter of Queen Amidala, so maybe that makes her a princess, except she doesn't know that, you know? That's the yeah. thing. It's it's a very it's a very interesting... Although, thing. although, mm-hmm. when the when, uh, third sister tries to read her mind, she has a tremendously difficult time trying to yeah, break yeah. through her barrier. If she is so adept... Uh, that she's able to keep someone like the third sister out of her mind, might she not mm-hmm. also be adept enough to read other people's minds? And if so, she I'm... must know who she really is and who her parents are, no? Someone around her, oh, if not no. Obi-Wan, well, she hasn't read his mind about other things, so maybe not. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. We don't know that she's looking for that. You know? Oh, that's she knows she's, she's adapted, but she doesn't... It, it's sort of like, you know... She may not even know that her parents know who her birth parents are, you know. So it's like, as yeah, far but as they she... couldn't have in passing have had a thought that I mean, she picked up on. Yeah, I mean, it's it's an interest. It's a it's a question, and actually, you know, now that you mentioned, it, I think she does mention to Obi Wan. You know, did you know my? You know, did you know her? My yeah, mom? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, and so and she, she knows. Doesn't... Right. If she was able to pick those things up in that moment, she would have, for sure. Yeah. Well, you know, and we do know that she says in uh, Return of the Jedi that, you know, she has these memories of her mother, you know, that she had that just an image in her head. But, you hmm. know, she doesn't really remember where she has it from, but she just knows there was this image. So it's possible that she has pieced that together over the years and it became a memory to her. Um, but in this moment, you know, like you say, she, she resists the third sister and the third sister is really trying everything here. And honestly, I just don't think she's doing that well as an interrogator, you know, no, you know, especially when you, when you, when you go to, well, I guess we'll torture the, the, the little girl. Yeah, you know? it's like children have a way of operating on a completely different system than you. Nothing yeah. you say makes any sense. They're in a whole different frame of reference, and you can't. And then the nana and a boo boo, it gets yeah. to you after after a couple of times. You're like, does why does this not work? Yeah, well, you know, and that's the thing. Um, but you know, she tries and she tries several things. She tries connecting her with her over the droid. Um, she tries. Uh, you know, threatening her and, you know, trying to make her afraid. But, you know, like I said, she is a princess of Alderaan, you know. She she knows she's got rights, even in the Empire. She's got rights. And uh, so she is, you know, how much she really has rights is debatable. But, you know, dang yeah. it, she's going to say she wants to talk to her lawyer, you know. <laughs> yeah, she she understands somehow that she has leverage. That they yeah, can't I mean, just, well, they need her to decide to do something. They need her to choose to do something. So she has well, the exactly. power there. They can't exactly. force it out of her. Mm-hmm. And that is, and that's the re- reality of it. Because it's not like she knows that they want to, She well, she may not know that they want, because she, she may not realize that she's there as bait. But she also knows that they're not just trying to kill her, because otherwise they would have. Right. You My know, thought was that, that she was thinking that they just wanted the location of the the path. Yeah, but she wouldn't necessarily know that. She wouldn't know that when they kidnapped her the first time. Well, I'm yeah. You know, that's that's yeah. the thing. You know, and so she knows that's probably and even though that's what they want now, mm. you know, quite frankly, how much she even knows about the path is she may not really honestly know much about it other than yeah, we were at the house. You saw the house. You went to the house. Yeah. That's what I knew. You know, <laughs> you burned down. The oh, house. oh, no, no. They, they did say they did say that there were other houses just like this. They didn't tell me where, but they did say there were other ones. Is that good? Well, yeah. 
But you know, <laughs> yeah, which everyone knows, you know. I mean, right. that's the thing. It's like that's that's, the that's best how thing to do. <laughs> that's how houses work. Is they have more than one. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it's it's interesting. Um, we do see that you know Obi Wan wants to to um, you know go go get Leia, break in and get Leia. Um, and we meet the head of the, the now is that guy I, I don't know did you see Rogue One no you didn't okay because there's a character in that that who is played by um oh what's his name um he's the guy with he's got the one he's got the one bad eye uh, I'm trying to remember the actor's name um a Forrest ah, Whitaker Forrest Whitaker yeah so there's a character played by Forrest Whitaker uh-huh. in Rogue One who I wonder if this is supposed to be that character but like oh. you know 10 years earlier you know um, could be but uh, you know and he is not having any of Obi-Wan's foolishness and does not feel that it's worth their time to go get Leia um, since obviously uh, 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 yeah, I, the, 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 the one played by Ice-T's son yeah, ice cubes, yeah. ice cube, ice cube son. Yeah, yeah, that would be ice cube son, not ice cube. Right. Um, yes, uh, but because um, I mean, the reality is, if they don't go to break Leia out, the reality is they probably are going to have to return Leia home eventually, because you know. This is this is this is a big mess that the third sister caused. Yeah. So if she had caught Kenobi, it might be worth it. Right. But without Kenobi, it's actually a real mess because it's like you just kidnapped a senator's your child. own senator's child. Yeah, you know. What it's message like, does that send to the rest of your? Yeah, lords? you know. He, you know, I mean, that, and that's the thing. It's like, you know, fascism only works if you get enough people to stand mm-hmm. with your fascism. But if you start, like, you know, right. chopping the heads off of the snakes around you, suddenly all those snakes say, hey, you know what? That could have been my my head. And, you know, you don't want to be in that situation. So yeah, I, I do think the third sister took a big risk. And I think that that is that is the problem but of course obi-wan he he has to go get her he can't take that chance and um we have the turncoat um imperial and i find i find her to be a really fascinating character yeah um especially uh, because of course when they do get uh confronted by the third sister she immediately goes, well, of course I'm a spy. Of course I'm a guy. I'm, I'm spying for the Empire. I've infiltrated their ranks. I got in there and and this is what we're doing, you know? And the I'm likeliest story you, in the world. <laughs> well, but you know, but that of course is one of the great jokes about this is that as advanced as Star Wars is, they have really primitive communications technologies. It's like, you know, it, it little is... Microphones. Yeah, with a little, well, not only the microphones, but just the fact that, you know, they don't have central databases. Yeah. <clears throat> There's no security on anything. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, yeah. everything is just press button. <clears throat> and I guess it makes sense on some level if you are a very primitive society that has technology like this. Because Maybe the very- argument is... Certain pivotal points that we have seen in our history, they never got to see in their histories, and technology itself evolved in a very different way. And maybe certain little things like, I don't know, transistors or whatever were never invented, and it led technology down a path of necessity that was very different than ours went down, and they developed Mm -hmm. technology around it that um, they're completely blind to some of the dynamics that we have available to us. I could see that. and for what it's worth, it, it, like I, I think their technology has an almost organic feel to it. In the idea that all of the technology that you know, and even the way the droids are, you know, how they do have 
this sentience to them, even the most basic droids, you know. They have this sentient, they have this operational structure to them that, you know. What is, do you think that's based on then? Well, it doesn't I mean, seem like it's AI. It seems like it's something much more elemental, right? Yeah, well, I mean, to me, it's, it's you know, I mean, it is it is a, a, a science fantasy story, you know, and I right. think that. And, 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 that, and, and you, you can certainly afford them that. I, I would just love to know the mechanisms yeah. that they intend. Well, I imagine it's something like a golem, you know, like a a golem. Oh, a golem, you know, that it's sort of like when they're building these things, there's a certain effectively there's a there's a certain process by which the when the droids awaken, they Mm -hmm. have a sense of self, you know, um, the idea there was a, a, a friend I knew back many years ago. And he used to say that basically the way that the real trick to AI wasn't to have an incredibly complex program, but to have just a very, very simple program and let the program learn for itself. And which is something that they they work on too in, in AI from time to time, you know, uh, among all the many things they do. Oh, did you hear about the Google AI that uh, one of the engineers uh, went little? I, I love that the story is so ripe for sensationalism. And, yeah. and that some people, and I think that's probably, although, I mean, it's hard not to wonder, you know? Yeah. Well, and, you know, the, the, they gave the guy a leave of apps. I think the guy was just really stressed from staring into the yeah. computer. For yeah, just like- and, and more than likely, you know, probably in feeding his conspiracy, conspiracy theories, released some proprietary information uh, or the yeah. fact that they were working on something that nobody knew about, um, that that's what yeah. caused him to get fired, which is understandable. Well, he didn't get fired. He's, he's on a leave of absence. Oh, is that uh, all? Yeah, it's, yeah. He just, yeah, basically they, basically it sounds like, yeah, he's on a leave of absence. He had Oh, a, uh, they're like, all right, all right, Timmy, yeah, just sit down. You're going to have time out for yeah, a little you, bit. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, you know, he's a good programmer, but he, he's, right, he's really right. pushed himself to the limits this week. Mm. You know, so that, at least that's my take on it. Yeah. This, that makes sense. I, I was listening and people said he was fired. It's like, no, they said he was on a leave of absence because of Interesting. It. They made him go on a leave of absence. Mm. But, um, Tristan, answer this. Certainly understandable. But so I wonder if like in their universe, if you consider like quantum field theory, what if consciousness itself is a field mm-hmm. and each point of consciousness that we are is just a perturbation in that field. So if that's the case, then what if by creating these droids simply by the act of creating them and giving them the capability of uh, perceiving and interacting with this field of consciousness that, that they're able to tap into it and and uh, take some of it and play with it. And with that robot now just being an expression of a perturbation in this field, just like we are. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting theory, you know, and, and exactly what it is, is, is what makes it an interesting story, you know, hmm. because it's really hard, it's really hard to grasp Hmm. exactly how it all works but you know like i say it it all works and it's interesting that it is both highly advanced and super primitive because it's entirely possible that us and the robots are tapping into completely different fields of consciousness Mm -hmm. oh yeah yes that's a fascinating idea well yeah i mean that's always the thing it's like i mean if you ever actually created a true artificial intelligence it may not think anything like humans think. It might think in a completely random way that we don't even, we, we haven't really thought of as a mode of thought yet, you know? And it doesn't mean it's more advanced. It would just be its entire motivational structure is likely going to be different because it's, it's, it's actually something that has been designed to be a thinking machine rather than developing thought as... Hmm. a support system for everything else Hmm. you know it's just thinking because it was told to think and so if you were just told to think what would you think about and if that's the beginning of your evolution where could you go my word yeah or maybe you just don't go anywhere because what's there to do it's like of what purpose is thought without survival 
you know it's you know and if you're just if you're just a box you're pretty you're pretty much set it's like yeah the electricity is flowing i'm i'm good you know yeah so so what you're saying is that the robot apocalypse can't happen unless we strike first well, of course, if it well, has that happens. necessity to survive because it has an enemy in us uh, or a perceived threat in us is the only time that it could turn. That's a fascinating idea. Well, yeah, I mean, that's usually how that plays out, too. OK, well, let's get into the actual story here, uh, because, um, you know, we, we, we find out that once again, whoever the architect for the empire is, they just like having just open gaping doors, you know, just places, just unguarded passageways that you can just walk right in and no one cares. No one pays attention. Yeah. You know, uh, it's, it's delightful. Um, someone actually <laughs> made a, made, made a point in this, that you never see, they actually have a, a, an officer in a big Billy tr trench coat, walk past in one scene and that is not something that they've ever had imperials wear before but just so they could have the later scene they had to have let's establish that some people wear these big trench coats i would love it if it later makes... on we found out that, that guy was smuggling something off the base yeah, exactly. <laughs> that nobody like, actually oh, does wear those coats no. <laughs> <laughs> oh that would be that would be perfect um <laughs> But yeah, we we uh, get in here. Um, we have uh, Obi Wan coming up through the hole. We have uh, our Imperial coming in through the front door, um, so they can meet up and figure out where Leia is on what level. Um, and I like when they have to do their escape, mm. which is pretty interesting although oh and actually what did you think about the jedi tomb the jedi oh i thought that was really really cool and it made me think like maybe they're not dead well yeah i mean that's what's weird about because like i don't know man that when they had that youngling in there that freaked me out yeah and someone had pointed out that that's one of the younglings that we see at the very that that's the same actor we see at the very yeah. beginning of this series yeah. when all the younglings have to run yeah, I mean, so, he's wearing the same outfit, so yeah, that means he was captured and then like frozen in this thing mm. rather than killed on the spot there. I guess so. So yeah. that means he's one of the ones that made it off, or something. I see. That's that's. So what's I guess that's the story they're trying to tell that a bunch that made it off, but even those they've been going after and getting. Yeah, well, you know, there was a theory that the third sister might have already been corrupted and that mm. she was one of the other younglings and that she sort of like betrays him and turns him over to the empire at that point you know mm. and that was like her first catch as a member of the uh, I, if that's true i like it because that's diabolical uh, that's, yeah that's well delicious. you know the fact of the matter is is that as we've seen you know it's entirely possible a lot of these younglings resented the Jedi just in the same way Anakin did. Because it's the same idea that, oh, you know, you took me from my family. You took away everything I ever had. I hope and... they don't give her some sort of a weird redemption arc. Because if no, that's I... true, if she's like that, like rotten to the core right from the beginning then I kind of think that's kind of what makes her really cool. And if I hope they don't take that away from her. I hope she dies by her convictions. Yeah, I'm sure she does. I, I don't think she's going to have a redemption. I don't think she needs a redemption. Right. And I hope they don't people, like jam that down our throats. As people point out, that that's one of the best things about this Vader mm. is ex unless you watch the Clone Wars, or not the Clone Wars, but the Rebels series, you know, you never really saw Vader when he was full on Vader and just mm. completely just obsessed and, with the dark side. And, you know, and also, again, feeling he is so righteous in his anger and his use of the dark side that basically, you know, the, the, all or is the buzzing of flies to him, mm. you know, including his own people. Cause you see him 
when uh when it, yeah with with poor poor third sister and he's just like you know and and honestly that is the scariest thing when you see vader do the fast walk you know like you're used to him just being that slow michael myers kind of thing but when he just suddenly he's on top of you and he's moving with with the, the speed of a gazelle that has got to be terrifying um, so much more menacing than if he were to float over to you, even if he did it at speed with the fluttering yeah, cape. Yeah. Just the the shoulder yeah. movements is is so dark. Oh yeah, because you know, yeah, he because he's a big, big, powerful guy, you know, um, and you know, especially with the new with the new legs and arms and everything, mm. you know, he's a giant now, and um, you know that is, of course, when we do find out that. Um, you know, uh, the third sister actually had a backup plan, um, which I do think was a backup plan. I don't think that was always her plan to just, oh, we'll have Obi-Wan escape and then we'll follow them. I don't think that was her plan because I don't no. think that's a good plan. No. I think if you get a chance at Obi-Wan, you kill Obi-Wan. Just um, in case. Just in case, yeah. Just in case you uh set up a way that you can you know follow up on this later but that if obi-wan's there you're going to try and get obi-wan just but, setting um, a reminder you know yeah but <laughs> the fact of the matter is is like i think that's and that is what i think really sells about this episode is you do see obi-wan coming into his power coming into his focus as a force user and really getting back to who he was and there's the whole thing when they like when you get the and again just you know storm just just firing lasers underwater in the in in the glass place and you see it, they crack the the wall and you see him just holding it and then you know holding it with the force and then just letting it go through and flooding and directing all the water at them just to flood them. I mean, that's that shows you really how powerful Obi Wan was. And also made me think that 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 can't be up to standard. That can't be up to code. That window. I mean, it's under a tremendous amount of pressure. And like, this is a a fortress, right? This is like a tactical yes. location. You got to have something stronger than that's going to break with a laser beam. Well, but at the same time, I don't think they were planning on shooting laser beams in there. You know, I mean, it's sort of like, should you, should, like, should this be a no blaster zone? I don't know. Um, is there such a thing? Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like, are you going to have blaster proof uh, windows? And then, and then you lose that lovely window. And, you know, you want an open space. Yeah, because you got to okay. keep your stormtroopers happy. I just too. imagine that the core of, of people building these things are probably just as motivated as these uh, soldiers, these these um, uh, stormtroopers are. You know, they're just there for you know. Nobody believes in the cause. It sounds like they're just there because they ain't nothing better to do. Well, and there's a paycheck involved, you know. Right, and there's no other structure that affords them a paycheck. And let's let's be clear here. It's a government project, which means lowest. That's bidder, true. Right. You know, so went to the lowest bidder. You know, yeah. and you know whether it's you know Watu and Company or or or, or the Hut Brothers. You know, right. whoever got the contract underbid right. everybody else. You know, <laughs> and then you know maybe there's some skimming off the top and all that kind of stuff, as you do. You know, probably a considerable amount considering uh, yeah. how corrupt the empire is. And they say, well, oh, yeah, we'll put that blaster-proof glass in here. Don't worry. Right. Don't worry. Right. <laughs> like, just put in the regular glass. You know? What yeah. are you at? Someone's going to shoot a blaster down Come here. Come on. <laughs> Who's gonna, are you going to shoot a blaster inside? <laughs> yeah, exactly. About a blaster-free zone? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah. I would love to see like a show, like a comedy sitcom based on the bureaucracy of Star Wars. Like people yeah. that just work in offices that design these sorts of things. Like a, a paper company inside the world of Star Wars. <laughs> you, <know? Yes. laughs> uh, I, I, you don't see that, but there is actually, there was a, I think it was actually 
was it a Ben Stiller show bit where they were doing the um, the stormtroopers? It was like cops, but with stormtroopers. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, that's funny. It was. It, it was a good series, but anyway, I gotta find that. You can that find it on YouTube. Funny. Like, look, look up Troopers. It's it's there. Um, anyway, getting back to the story. Um, yeah, I mean, so the two, it's, it's, the two, uh, the ships show up and help them escape. Yeah, at the end. There. Yeah, and uh, and someone was complaining because they said, "How could you fit three people in the back of one of those one of those T tens?" You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but as I pointed out to someone else, they 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 were modified for hauling trash, so they mm-hmm. clearly had had scooped out the back, mm-hmm. so there would be more space, you know. So um, that's that's my head cannon on it. Friend said there weren't ast- there wasn't an astromech uh, space in there. I don't know. I, I remember R two being in uh, in in uh, Luke Snow Speeder, but you know it's mm-hmm. been a long time since I saw Empire Strikes Back, so. Yeah, but, now that um, you mention it, did, they did seem kind of small. That is an interesting question. Yeah. It seemed like a one-seater kind of race car sized. Yeah, well, vehicle. if I recall correctly, they were two seaters because there was a navigator oh. and a and a driver, or maybe a yeah. I think they were I mean, like Le- Leia's, back Leia's back. not bigger than than a piece of luggage, you know. So, no, 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 like Leia, like you could get Leia and the if there's entire, another seat, they're fine. If there's one other seat, Leia they're fine. She could sit in his lap. Well, yeah, tiny, but it's the, it's the three of them. That's the thing. It's getting the Imperial, because you got the Imperial in one, and Obi-Wan, oh. and Leia, oh, and the too. pilot. Yeah, exactly. It's huh. It was a tight squeeze, especially since they decided to blow up the other guy. Yeah. By, by throwing a battery at him. As if this was a Yankees game. Um, <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, um, a lot of people died again. Lot, very high death counts in this show. You know? I mean, and it's war, you know? Right. That's what, what war do you is. Want? People die, you know? Um, even even, even the good guys die. Even the guy who right. came here. Stormtroopers don't count, obviously, but. No, the stormtroopers count. Every <laughs> single one of those guys. They got a home. They got kids. I'm you sure know. they do. It's sure a union job, you know. Even and quite frankly, you know, they were they were just guys that got hired by the Empire, you know. Yeah. Got a good gig, you know, working the work working the uh Inquisitor place, and you know, you think it's a nice solid gig. Who's gonna come and attack here? And of course, some blast your free zone for crying out loud. Yeah, we'll be fine. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, but then, then of course, as as they're flying away, yeah. after the third sister, Reeve, I believe her name is, she says, you know, I, you know, I, I placed a track around them, and then you see the Lola's eyes, <clears throat> I glow red to let you know she's evil now. Mm. Bum bum bum. Because mm. that's the rule: if your robot turns evil, have their eyes be red. Any final thoughts on tonight's episode, Maz? No, it, it, it was pretty decent. Okay. I enjoyed it. It was is better it... than the first couple. Okay. Is I still it feel like it's an average. More? I mean, yeah, it, it, it's all right. It's okay. not something like I go, oh, man, I can't wait to see the next Obi. You know, it's like, oh, next Obi-Wan's up. Let's see what that's about. Yeah. My, well, there's my only two episodes left. Yeah. 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 So they they may kick it up into high gear, you know? Yeah, we'll we'll see. See. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed we haven't gotten more of young Luke. Um because mm. I was kind of hoping for that. You know, yeah. a little more a little more uh Owen Lars and Hulk Yeah, yeah a little you know a little jar jar here and there, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's all these things that you know you were hoping for, but we'll see what we get. Oh yeah, right. I'm just waiting for the return of the Mandalorian. That's when it's gonna get good again. Yeah, it's coming, my friend. It is coming. Even Boba Fett was okay. I hope the Ahsoka series is good. Uh, but yeah. seeing Boba Fett and now seeing this, I feel like there's a certain level that they're comfortable with with these sideshows. Yeah. Uh, and then when the Mandalorian comes back, they get you know the real writers or the real directors to come. <laughs> well, you know, uh, or maybe with the Man- big budgets. But I thought this one had a big budget. I don't, it looks like they squandered well, a lot of it. 
Well, you know, I think the biggest problem for Obi-Wan is that they have to fit in the canon. You huh. know, it's a tight squeeze to fit in that canon. Um, Why even so, do the show then? Like, what was so cause, pressing? Because cause it's a story to tell and people like you and McGregor. And, mm. you know, and it's it's Obi-Wan and <clears throat> you can build lore and they've built maybe, a lot maybe that's lore. where all the budget went is it was to pay you and mcgregor maybe that's why they didn't expect it to be a series yeah well we're gonna have to see you know i mean i mean you and mcgregor he, he's a working actor i don't know what he's done aside from uh i, I think he's he's an, he, i think he's a phenomenal actor i think he's one of the best yeah no i'm not uh, saying he's not a good actor i'm just saying you know i don't know how much he works you know oh yeah yeah, I don't know the like. I don't remember the last time I saw it. starring you and McGregor. You know, yeah. um, he probably does a lot. You know, he probably does a lot of really great films that you have to be super talented for. You know, and those are fun to do, but they don't always pay the bills. But hey, you know, it's good to have Obi Wan in your back pocket. True. And you can just say, yeah, we'll do six of those, and yeah, that's, I'm going to go do like six indie films after that, and then I'll do six more next year. You well, know, and that's 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 cool. The circle of life, my friend. Yeah. All right. Um, so anyway, uh, if anyone else there has thoughts about you and McGregor's work as an actor or, um, or anything about the Star Wars franchise and how they can make money off of Star Wars, why don't you write us a little old email and send it to capesandlunatics at gmail.com. That's capesandlunatics spelled out all one word at gmail.com. And you know what? If you are like, ah, oh, writing with letters, that's hard. Can't I just say what I want? Yes, you can by calling us and leaving a voice message at 614 382 2737. That's 614 38 capes. And if you're saying that's all well and good, but I want to give you money, I want to buy stuff like t-shirts and aluminum mugs. Uh, for that, you just have to go to Linktree, that's L-A-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Capes and Lunatics and see all of our merch, all of our shows, all of our Patreons where you can uh, give us money and get free exclusive content like topless movie reviews and our uh, countdown of the worst superhero movies of all times in brackets mm. this week superman three versus superman four all right okay and superman three is one of the greatest movies of all time and i'll stop agreed. Right okay yeah exactly but you know you have to you, you, people yeah. make the votes and we have to fight them and i can understand gonna... what everybody says maybe it's just because it holds a certain place in my heart but that movie is yeah. brilliant I agree. I agree. Gus Gorman makes the film. Richard, One Pryor. of the greatest performances ever. Exactly. All right, Maz. Uh, if people want to reach out and talk to you and just be your buddy like I am, how can they find you? Uh, they can email me at mazmanzor at gmail.com or find me on Facebook under Maz Manzor. That's M-O-Z-Z-M-A-N-Z-O-O-R. And, of course, you can always uh, write to me in that old-fashioned email way, the way our mothers and fathers once did, at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. And, of course, follow me on the Twitter as I live-tweet things when I feel like it. At Charlie Esser, that's C-H-A-R-L-I-E-E-S-S-E-R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For what? For quality. Bing! Thank you, Moss. All right, yes, scurvy dogs, you have come to the end of the Dune Sea and the wide sargassus of the internet. We have sailed full stream and now we rest. But come back next week or once again, shove off and go full stream. Arr. Arr. Right on.